if all of us come to an end, mm. God's dream doesn't come to an end, but there's no longer anybody there to perceive it. Therefore, it no longer appears as the world. But isn't your definition of God's dream the modulation of consciousness? And if there are no senses... No, no, with God, which... God, God's dream is the activity of, of, of consciousness which appears as the universe from our localised and limited points of view. But the activity could still continue without being perceived. What that would entail, we cannot possibly say. I see. We, e e even b because, because all we can... Because we, because we look at that activity through the filter of our senses. So we can only see the way our senses present that activity to us. You can't see white snow through orange tinted glasses. You can only see the way the snow presents itself when it is observed through the orange tinted glasses. I see. So what we observe is the, the activity of consciousness, God's dream, as it is filtered through the glasses of seeing, hearing, touching, tasting and smelling. So the, the finite mind is like a, a virtual reality headset that consciousness puts on. Looking out through the senses, it perceives its own activity as, as the world as we know it. When it is no longer perceived, its reality doesn't disappear because its reality precedes its being perceived, but its appearance disappears. Remember, we half create, half perceive the world. We create its appearance, we perceive the way its reality appears to us. So we, we perceive what is there, we create its appearance. I see. If, if there were no minds with their limitations so this is, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying if there's no minds with no limitations there's nothing to suggest that the activity of consciousness doesn't continue exactly why would it not continue yes because our I minds see. are just a little localization of that activity I, I so see. there is infinite consciousness it's vibrating within itself it looks okay. like a Jackson Pollock, Pollock painting mm -hmm. and then a little little part of the Jackson Pollock painting dissociates and becomes our finite mind mm -hmm. still made of the same stuff of the same activity of consciousness but now it's a little localization of that activity of consciousness within the broader field of consciousness so when the and the, when the, the little the associated finite mind looks back, looks out at the Jackson Pollock painting. It appears as the universe. Mm. When the finite mind disappears, the Jackson Pollock painting remains. The activity of consciousness remains, but it no longer appears as the universe because there's nothing for it to appear to. So it's just the the we could say it was just the the, the vibration of consciousness, the activity of consciousness, God's dream in in the. In the, I see. And, and what, what, what that would, what that would be, we, we, we cannot know because our mind superimposes its own limitations on everything that it knows. So we can't know what form it would have, but we can know its reality. We can know what it is. Why? Yeah. Because we are a part of that reality. If you know the reality of the wave, you know the reality of the ocean. If you know that the wave is water, you know that the ocean is water. So we don't have to investigate the entire universe in order to know its reality. Mm. We only have to uh, investigate this corner of the universe. Mm. As long as we know this little corner of the universe, this mm -hmm. little wave on the ocean, if we discover that the, 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 the reality of this little wave on the mm. ocean is water, then by definition we know the nature of the I whole. See. Would it be fair to say that perhaps um, the activity of consciousness may cease at 
I, I, this is where I, I think I'm getting. Yes, uh, you know, I'm trying to see the infinite with the fi through the finite mind, but because it's, I know that it's, all, it's simultaneously seized and moving. It, it, exactly, but it, it's always, it's always. Um, yes, it's always ceasing and moving. It's not that it ceased billions mm. of years ago and it's been now been moving for billions of years, and one day mm. in the future it'll cease. It, it, it's, it's always. We, we we can't really go. We there can't with the really mind. go. There, it's, can we? It's, it's always um, every time you fall deeply asleep, it, it we could say a part of it ceases. They're very sure. imperfect analogies. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. I think there was. You, you know. Yeah. You know when you're doing, having a Zoom conversation, Francis, and you've got your your. Um, what does it say? It's seven by seven. You, you've got your 49, 49 images, 49 faces. Mm. And each, each fain, face represents an activity of the screen. And then someone turns their camera off. And there's just a, it's just a blank screen. So in that little, in that rectangle where someone's turned their camera off, the, the activity of the screen has ceased. It's just a blank screen. But mm. All the other faces are still present. Mm. It's a very imperfect analogy, but the screen is both acting and static at the same time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But even even when the faces even when the faces are present, if we, if we consider the faces to be the activity of the screen, the screen itself is not moving. Let's forget that. You're watching a movie. The 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 image is moving, but the screen is static. Mm. So it's not. Our categories of sti stillness and movement are imperfect categories to describe the nature of consciousness. They're the best we can do. Mm -hmm. They're rather crude models. Mm -hmm. But so these models are just a, an attempt to satisfy our curious minds. Sure. To put our curious minds at rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that I think what what I'm realizing is that my question betrayed inside me a very subtle, um, a very subtle residue of assumption that um, that, con that uh, consciousness is created throughout from our minds. Yes, but 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 that's beautiful, Francis. That that that's the that that's the importance of asking questions because we don't really ask questions in order to have our questions answered. We ask questions in order to expose our assumptions mm. and have our assumptions dissolved. Mm. That's, that's enough. Mm. Not to answer the question, but to expose and dissolve the assumption mm. in the question.